lot of you watch Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You and she put out a couple of videos recently where she said she was hacked and I kind of want to give you my two cents on how to protect yourself from that. For those of you that are new, I just retired last August from the U.S. Air Force Civilian Service where my job was cybersecurity. And my job was to keep the system so secure so that the hackers couldn't get into the Department of Defense's human resources systems. I have not spoken to Jean. We have not communicated about this at all. I think what happened from what I could glean on watching her video was that she was what's called fished. And that's P-H, fished. F P-H-I-S-H-E-D, and it, the, the term comes from throwing out a hook and seeing who bites and reeling them in and you're fishing them. Jean mentioned that she had gotten an email from Norton, who is her security provider for her computer, and she clicked on a link or called a number or something, and that's how they do it. And the emails are very good, they, they look like they are definitely coming from that particular provider. As a matter of fact, I got the same email uh, because I too use Norton. The federal government uses Norton. The Department of Defense uses Norton. They have the contract. And because of that, I felt very comfortable with using Norton on all of our home computers. Now, when it comes to computers, I'm gonna tell you guys, Knowing computers is, is like every tradesman that you could have in your house, okay? I don't know how to fix them. I don't know how to clean viruses off of them other than installing a program that will do it and hit clean, okay? That's not me. Just like you would not call a plumber to fix something that your electrician would do, I don't, I, I know just enough to be dangerous. I'm not, I'm not an end user support in any way, shape, or form, okay? There are people who do that for a living and they're very good at it, but I am not one of those. My job is to is prevention. That's what I do. I prevent things from happening. So all I can do is give you some knowledge to maybe prevent it from happening to you as well. And I'm just gonna to describe to you what I do in our home with all of our computers, and we have a bunch of them. The first thing I want to tell you to do is to leave your computer on all the time. Leave it on. You don't have to leave the screen awake. You can put it to sleep by clicking down at the power on the screen and click that little circle that looks like an on off circle and, and it'll say restart or power off or, or sleep and just click sleep and let it do its thing. So the companies that make the computers do not want you to be hacked. Because if you feel like the computer is a big vulnerability in your life and you're very threatened by it, you're not going to use it. You're not going to watch YouTube on it. You're not going to shop on it. The companies that make the computers want your computer to be secure. Now, years ago, Microsoft used to not do this. Microsoft used to say, uh, securing the computer is up to the consumer. Well, they got away from that about 10 years ago. And today, Microsoft has a very robust program for Windows security. And that all happens usually when the computer is being used the least, which is at night. And so we leave all of our computers on all the time and let them go to sleep and you know whatnot but all night long they receive updates well they receive updates 24 hours a day actually but most programs get their updates in nighttime hours from whatever country you are in okay and if you've ever noticed where if you keep your computer off only when you need it okay and you come back a couple days later a week later or whatever it takes forever to get anything done on the computer because it's going through and processing all these updates that it needs. And if you cancel those out, you're, you're telling the computer you don't want those updates. Y'all do not want to do that, okay? You want those updates from Windows security. You have 
Norton like we do, all of that stuff really happens in off time hours. And if you have the computer turned off, it can't get its updates. Every morning when I come and sit down at my computer, it whizzes along lickety split. The computer that's on my long arm, my tablet, I leave it on all the time. And so they are continually getting their updates from Windows security, Microsoft is doing Windows security updates on my system. And you guys, when you buy a computer, that comes standard. I mean, it's running right along. Now, when you first start it up, it'll say, do you want us to do this? You need to tell it yes. Let it do its thing. So first of all, you cannot get hacked unless you invite them into your system yourself. Your systems, if you have them set up properly, where you've got it so that it's getting its, its uh, security updates from the company that made the computer, and then we have Norton installed. You can get one license for like five computers, and we have that on all of our computers, and Norton does all of its updates all the time, and it performs scans all the time as well. So our systems are scanned several times a day in the background for what we're doing, because I'm out on the internet like all the time. And you know, I'll be surfing around and I'll click a link and it'll pop up and say, nope, this is a bad site. And I'm like, all right, fine. And I just go away and I'll do my thing somewhere else, okay? I'm not being paid by Norton. I'm, it's not an affiliate thing. I'm just telling you guys what I do for my computer security in my home. Because I know you guys, when you see stuff like that, you get upset and you feel, oh, you know, you just, I don't know, I don't know what to do with it. I'm not a computer person. Well, you don't need to be a computer person. You just need to get stuff on your system so that your system can run in a secure manner, okay? So let's get back to a phishing email. What does a phishing email look like? Phishing emails will look like they come directly from the company that you're doing business with in the first place. My email is powertoolswiththread at outlook.com. I am paying Microsoft for the Outlook email. I have an annual subscription with them. And so I get emails like this all the time. Here's Outlook Upgrade 2021. It's a service alert and it has the little Microsoft Windows box on it. Let me get close. This is what it looks like. So it's got the Microsoft Windows icon right there. It's an Outlook Upgrade 2021 and it's a service alert. All right, and then there's a link, Upgrade Now. So let's talk about this email. How do I know that this is a phishing email? Well, first of all, phishing emails will have a threat. They will say something to the effect of, your subscription is going to expire, your upgrade, this one says, this is to notify you for the final time that we have stopped processing your order. We will be forced to block your account if this notice is ignored. Upgrade now. This restriction will be disabled immediately if we confirm the upgrade. That's a threat. So that's the first indicator that this is a phishing email. It contains a threat. And when you don't know what these are, you'll get very flustered and go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I, I, I can't have them shut off my email. That's the whole purpose for you to click on that. And it even says it's from Microsoft Corporation, Microsoft Way, Redmond, Washington, and the zip code, right? That's where Microsoft lives. So let me show you. So the first indicator is that there's a threat, all right? Here's the second indicator. Look who it's from. See that, who that's from? It's probably not a person. It's not from Microsoft.com, it's from Hotmail. Microsoft doesn't use Hotmail. Hotmail is a, an email service that Microsoft supports, but it's not from Microsoft.com. That's who it would be from if, if this was legit. When you see stuff like this, if you're not sure, Let's say you're right around the time that your subscription is gonna renew for something and you get an email like this and you're not sure, go to the company website itself. Don't, don't click on any of these links. By clicking on the link, you have given the company permission to get into your system. And there's a, not a lot you can do about it because nine times out of 10, they're outside the United States and the US doesn't have any jurisdiction to do anything about this at all. 
Now, if I clicked on this link, my Norton would probably start flashing at me pretty strongly. But this is, and they'll even, they may not have a link. It might have an 800 number for you to call. And then they're going to want your user ID and your password. Never, 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 never give that out over the phone. Ever. <laughs> Don't do it. If I did not believe that this was phishing, I can go out to Microsoft.com. I can look at my account. I can see that everything is just fine. And believe me, if they do an upgrade, they're going to push it to me automatically. It's included in my subscription. So this is crap. All right, here's another one. Here's one from Amazon. Payment temporarily disabled. We have placed a hold on your Amazon account and all pending orders. It's got an Amazon logo on there. It says, we took this action. Billing information you provided did not match the information on file with the card issuer. Well, first of all, my credit card on Amazon is an Amazon Prime credit card. So that doesn't smell right, right? You know, you kind of go, that smells like the back end of a cow. Hmm. And then they want you to click the button to update payment information. If we are unable to complete the verification process within three days, all pending orders will be canceled. There's a threat. You hear the threat? We're going to cancel all your orders. I'll tell you one time, I got one and it said, thank you for your purchase. And it had the Amazon stuff on it and everything. So and so in San Francisco is getting this brand new $1,500 big screen TV. And I looked at it and I said, big screen TV? I told Keith, I said, did you order a TV? He goes, no. So instead of clicking on the link to verify the purchase, because it looked, my thought was somebody got into my account and ordered a TV. But instead of clicking on the link to see what happened from the email, I went out to Amazon myself and I looked at my account and there wasn't no TV purchase on there. It was phishing. That's what was happening. Here, let me show you how you can tell. This is from customer service, but look at that email address. Who is that from? At, I don't have a clue, certainly not from amazon.com. You can usually tell in the return who it's from. If you can see that email address, that's how you can tell that that is a phishing email. Here's another one, confirmation email. This is from at outlook.com. You sent a payment of $14.99 US dollars to Springfield Armory. And here's your receipt number and the charge will appear on your credit card as a payment to PayPal Springfield Armory. Save time with PayPal account, create an account, save your payment information, sign up now. If you didn't order it, here they want you to call, okay? Well, look who that's from. See that? That's not from Springfield Armory, and it's not from PayPal. It's not from anybody I know. It's phishing, okay? And look at the difference in the fonts. So there's some brown, there's some black. This is, this is really a bad one. I would think they could do better than this. This is a bad one. That's kind of my take on being able to recognize phishing attempts to get into your system. If it happens, you need to immediately, if it happens. Now, if you get one of these emails and you don't do anything with it, just delete it. Just delete it off your system, delete it out of your system, whatever, delete it out of your email, delete it out of deleted items, whatever you wanna do. No further action from you is required at all. Nobody got into your system, you're not fished, everything's fine. If you did click on something, oh, let me clear something else up too. I was getting a new phone this one and I was in the AT&T store and a couple came in they had gotten a phishing email and she had seen it on her phone and she clicked the link and so they wanted to get new phones which you really don't need to do but they were afraid that their home computer had been hacked that's not how that works if you didn't click the link on your home computer. The technology for hacking is different for phones, which is why phones generally aren't hacked that often. The technology for hacking phones is way different from hacking computers that are in your house, okay? So if you click something here, you can be pretty sure your home computer's fine. 
you did not download a virus on your home computer if you don't click it on your home computer, okay? Don't click links in emails, okay? If it happens, you do need to call your bank and there is so much pain involved in um, shutting off the credit cards and locking the accounts and getting all that stuff taken care of. I know some of you have gone through that and the pain is unbearable. It's even worse if they actually did steal some money from you or were able to make a huge purchase that you couldn't afford. You have to file a police report that's going to go on your credit report. You need to refer back to that for the next 10 years until that all gets cleaned up. That's one of the reasons I use Norton with 360 with LifeLock. LifeLock and Norton partnered together, and so they take care of all that for you if it happens on their watch. You guys, the peace of mind, it's a hundred bucks. I think I think we're on we're on the cheapest plan, which is like $89 or something like that per person for the LifeLock part of it. Y'all totally worth it. You know, totally worth it. We're in the process right now of refinancing our house because the rates are so low. And immediately my phone blew up, my laptop blew up, go and that that term is used, it doesn't it didn't really explode. That term is used meaning you're getting a lot of notifications. Immediately Life, LifeLock notified me. Did you authorize your credit to be pulled? Did you do this? I tell you, yes, yes, you know, no problem. Making sure it was pulled by the same company that's doing the refi, of course. It's peace of mind. It is worth every nickel. You will spend less over your lifetime using that product every year than you will going through the cleanup process if, uh, if your identity is stolen or your system, uh, somebody gets into your system and you have to buy a whole new computer. It's just, it's worth it, you guys. It, it really is worth it. It's, that's just from me to you. I'm just letting you know that. So I do not recommend Kaspersky. It is made in Russia. Don't use it. Don't use free stuff, okay? Use something that if, if something happens to your computer as a customer of that company, you can go back to them and say, hey, I need for you to fix this, okay? My system, I guarantee you right now I'm not on it, and I bet you Norton's working in the background running a scam or it's backing up my files or whatever it's doing. So anyway, if you have questions about that, anything, leave a comment below and let me know. Um, I'll answer the best that I can. But uh, that's pretty much how I keep things very simple here and we stay secure while we're out online all the time. All right, we will talk to you soon. Go says something. Bye.